Howdy y'all. I'm back for part three of debunking some more of this bullshit creationism video. Come on. Now, the most glaringly obvious problem with the theory of evolution, ironically, is acknowledged by the original promoter of this fantasy, Charles Darwin himself. And this problem is the complete lack of transitional species in the fossil records. Wrong, sir. Wrong. Now, I can see that you ain't never read none of Charles Darwin's books, but I know you've been praying for wisdom, so I'm going to help you out right now. It was all the way back in 1859 when Charles Darwin published his book on the origin of species, wherein he basically said, if evolution is true, how come we don't find tons of fossils in every geologic stratum? But that ain't the end of it, son. He devotes an entire chapter of his book to this idea and goes on to give many, many answers to this question. Did you know that? It's called All of Chapter 9. Please look it up. We should literally be able to dig anywhere and find tons of fossils representing the billions, that's billions with a B, of distinct transitional species that the theory would require. There are absolutely none, and this cannot be ignored. You're the only one who's ignoring them. Look at this shit, man. And how about this one? And this one. Hell, I think I might just sing a song about them. Well, I didn't need no damn apostles to find this list of fossils of intermediate species. Why do you refuse them? You just got a good look. Even if you found their places, we got Let me restate this. We should almost be able to go and dig in our backyard and find uh, petrified uh, plants and bones of animals that are all an amalgamation. We should be able to easily see the flow and the change of one species to another in the fossil record. We, got we, got we do not have one of any species at all that has held up under scrutiny to show a legitimate transitional species. The local Inuit people came up with the name Tiktaalik for our fossil. It means large freshwater fish. But although this creature had the scales and fin of a fish, it also had the flat head and rotating neck of a land animal. And when we looked at its fins, we realized it had the beginnings of the bone structure that's shared by all four-limbed vertebrates today. It had versions of an upper arm, forearm, even parts of a wrist. This was a fish from a pivotal moment in evolutionary history. <coughs> Did you see it? Go back and watch it again if you can't believe it. It is beautiful, if I do say so myself. Let's not forget the interesting case of the uh, siliconth fish which was considered extinct and a fossilized evidence of this was said to be 350 million years old. Wrong, sir. Wrong. The coelacanth fossilized evidence is 350 million years old. Why are you saying it was said to be 350 million years old? And they touted it as this uh, clear case of a transitional species. Uh, which supposedly had primitive lungs and legs. And this represented a fish that was getting ready to start moving on to land to become a little mouse or a cat or a dog or something. Oh, please show me the scientific paper you read saying that the coelacanth fish was getting ready to pounce up on the land to become a Siamese souffleac. Please. This would have flown and it did fly for a while until... In a December of 1938, there was a little fisherman that found one off the coast of South Africa in his net, living. So what, man? Okay, I'm sick of all this ignorant shit y'all been yapping on about. Let me explain to y'all how science works. It's very simple. 
People look around and see shit. Then they make inferences and predictions based on the evidence they find. The more these predictions come true, and the more evidence we find that confirms these predictions, the stronger the case becomes for the inferences drawn from them. If the predictions do not come true, then the inferences remain inferences. If newer and stronger evidence comes along and contradicts the inferences of the past, this new evidence is incorporated into a new set of inferences and predictions. What the f is so hard to understand about that? And under further investigation- Hold on man, I ain't done. Before 1938, the Western world had never seen a living coelacanth fish. The only reason people even knew they existed was because of the fossils. Now since then, many more coelacanth fossils have been found, but no coelacanth fossil ever discovered has come from a geologic strata younger than 66 million years, even though we still got live ones now. So putting these two facts together, don't it make sense? People thought that the coelacanth was probably extinct before they found the living ones in the year of me, 1938. And under further There is a difference in the level of confidence and veracity that scientists place on one single observation versus a humongous network of beautifully intertwined pieces of evidence that all point to the same conclusion over and over and over again. The latter is called a scientific theory. Although a single piece of evidence may lead people to form incorrect inferences, the chances of a big, robust, and sturdy theory doing the same thing are about as close to zero as the distance from my balls to my ass. They are extremely close. And under further investigation... Go on, man. I'm done. Under further investigation, we found more and more of these silicon fish, and we actually discovered that some tribal people in the area had been fishing and eating these things for many, many, many generations. So this living fossil uh, was clearly not uh, the owner of any lungs or primitive legs. It's just a fish that the evolutionists made up and said, oh, this looks like it could be. So this is this and that. Oh, this looks like it could be. So this is this and that. And so they had this long explanation that turned out to be completely false. Look, man, your ignorance is hurting my head more than this here. Oh, shit. This here thorn of crowns. If you are interested in learning the fascinating truth about the coelacanth fish's evolutionary history. See the link in the description below to a video by Tony Reed. His YouTube channel has a righteous series of videos called How Creationism Taught Me Real Science. For the love of my dad and everything holy, please look it up. Please, 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 please. All right, y'all. Hopefully we'll be done with this creationism bullshit video soon. It's wearing on my nerves, I swear to God. See y'all next time. I love you so.